Now, in our first adventure, you're going to meet a guy that takes some of Detroit's most historic buildings and turns them into guitars. Wait, what? You heard right. Mark Wallace saw some of the city's most iconic buildings headed for the trash heap, had an idea, said hold on a minute, and is now creating incredible sounds heard around the world on his Detroit Wallace guitars. Why does this old wood sound so good? Let's ask Mark. Now, I'm not just saying this because I'm a musician, at least I like to think I am, but um, what you're doing is so cool. I mean, your guitars are like a musical manifestation of this, the history of this great city. Yeah. But how did, how did it all happen? I mean, <laughs> how did you come up with this really cool concept? Uh, I, I've been obsessed with music forever, ever since I was a little kid. Um, I grew up listening to the Beatles and the Association. My family was all about it. So I've always had that music vein and I've always loved the music story of Michigan, man. Whether it's, you know, the MC5, whether it's Eminem, you know, Jack White was hitting right when I was coming through college. Yeah. Um, you know, and the Iggy of the Stooges coming out of Ipsy, right? Like, I mean, it's just amazing, amazing heritage there. So I had this sort of Detroit thing and this music thing. And um, anybody who lives in Detroit, you, know, you look around and you see all these vacant houses. But I started thinking, what could you do with those vacant houses? Um, so I was working in real estate, and a friend of mine introduced me to a friend of his who was working in a nonprofit that was taking these houses down, the ones that were well beyond repair, right. and uh, realizing that there's amazing wood inside those houses. Um, just sort of go over the process. When the wood comes in, yeah. how it's made into, like, what happens? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we get the wood from the nonprofit Architectural Salvage Warehouse of Detroit, and you know, when it comes in, they have to plane it down, so that takes the outside edge off. And then they have to glue it up into what we call a slab, which is, it looks like a cutting board, it's just a big piece of laminated wood. Yeah. Usually a body like this will have four or five pieces that come together. Uh, and then we sand that down and then we cut out the shape and then we start to put it together and assemble it. So it goes from really rough, ratty stuff to really beautiful almost overnight, which is really great. You know, Michigan has the, the music history, but Michigan also has the maker history too, right? Like, yeah. you think about Henry Ford walking around these streets and everybody had to come up with new ideas to make the cars evolve so quickly. Um, yeah, you know, and when I was growing up, I had so many friends who had a dad with a wood shop in the basement or a dad with a, you know, a pretty good mechanic shop out in the garage. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to be able to kind of fit into that space as well. And I've found really good people, the, the folks who work on these guitars, are really, really smart and brilliant at what they do too. So it's nice to take something that's got that sort of maker history for Michigan. Yeah, I just love the fact that they're part of the history of the city. They're beautiful guitars. Thank you. Everyone's different. Yeah, and that's one of the other cool things is you got wood, which has effectively been harvested at the same time as like, you know, 1955 Fender would have been harvested. Um, but you have the modern electronics and modern tune machines, yeah. modern necks. So you get kind of the best of both worlds. You got the resonance and the history of the wood. Uh, with a modern setup. Yeah, it's just, I mean, when you look at these guitars, I've never seen guitars with wood that beautiful. It's like you don't want to finish over them because it's its all about yeah. the wood. Yeah, it really is. And the wood is like a fingerprint. I mean, every single one has its own characteristics. Exactly. And, and you yeah, know, a lot of these you can see, you know, sort of the relics. Now this guy, you know, these are old nail holes, right? I mean, that, that's where yeah. there was a nail, it got rusty, and it sat there for 100 years, and then we tore it down filled the hole and turned it in. But I mean, look at that. It's just a gorgeous thing. This guy's still got a little piece of metal, a hunk of metal still stuck in there too. Yeah, I mean, everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Everyone is a piece of history. It's just, yeah, I wish I'd thought of something this cool. Darn it. <laughs> Somebody else always thinks of the cool stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I guess we do a TV show. I guess that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, being a bit of a guitar slinger myself, I asked Mark if I could shred a bit of one of his awesome guitars, and uh, I think I made quite an impression. I thought you said these guitars sounded good. I, it, it just depends on who's playing it. I love seeing people's unique and creative ideas come to fruition, especially when it's something this meaningful and fun. So if you're looking for an incredible guitar that's part instrument, part art, part history, and a whole lot of Motown, check out Detroit Wallace Guitars. Now, if uh, you'll excuse me, I got more shredding to do. Okay, Mark, is that an A chord? Uh, no, Tom, that, that's a C. Darn it. <laughs>